Um, in regards to the homeless crisis in some cities in America, I've heard Muslims say that homelessness is a lifestyle choice and we should not give to them. Instead of understanding the root causes of homelessness, they'll disregard it as not their problem by saying they just need to get psychological help. What literature could the professor recommend about understanding the root causes of homelessness and how the average person can help? Yeah, you know, this is really, this is really, it, it, it really, I, I don't know, I, I, it's an immigrant, it, it's a phenomenon of immigrant mentality, I have to say, for the most part. You know, not always, but for the most part. Um, just because you're an immigrant, just because you've worked hard, just because Allah enabled you the health, the well-being, to work hard, to pay your bills, to avoid homelessness. Uh, sometimes, the, sometimes the same people that say things like that, I know that they exploit the system to get from the state money that they're not entitled to. The same people who are sitting there condemning people for being homeless, um, and they and they think to themselves just because we you know we're this is uh, we're dealing with corporations or we're dealing with the IRS or we're dealing with social security system or whatever that it's somehow it's halal to, to cheat that, which is exactly what Surah Al Baqarah. Uh, uh, condemns Jews for doing that they, they, they that they said oh when it comes to non-jews we can we can have licenses when it in taking their money and then you find Muslims doing the same oh because they're not Muslim then we can cheat the system and and by the way these same people just for information same people if they were even in a Muslim country they would still cheat I mean it, they, it someone with this mentality it, it, it really they they really use religion as a cover, but their their ethics are the same regardless. But there is a vast literature on on the reasons for homelessness, um, and and um, there there is a, 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 I mean just there, there's a, a, a political scientist at, at Yale called James Scott who has written a lot on. On homelessness but but even beyond that if you just do any research on homelessness or um, urban disposition or urban displacement and yes some degree of homelessness is because people are, are addicted to alcohol or addicted to drugs and can't hold jobs um, some degree of homelessness is because of mental illness but this society like so many other societies, unfortunately, doesn't spend money on uh, mental illness. And while we spend, you know, what, ridiculous amounts of money on weapons and arms and so on, uh, we, we literally spend peanuts on the mental disability. And, and, but, but beyond this, uh, a lot of people are homeless because of various serious trauma in life. A trauma that they played no role in creating for themselves, um, including abuse and the like. Uh, addiction is often itself an illness that, that we are only starting to understand and and I, I mean, and th that's a very big topic. But m mental illness, you can judge the morality of society often with how well they take care of those who are mentally disabled. That is often a thermometer for the, the, how civilized the society is. Add to all of that, the literature is very clear. I mean, the, every scholar, every sociologist, every anthropologist who have studied the phenomena of homelessness, depending on 
the methodology of the research, the percentages are as high as 50%, and the lowest that I've ever read is 20%, is not due to any mental illness and not even due to any addiction. And But a lot of times, poor education, meaning they, they haven't had many opportunities to be trained or qualified in life, and horrible circumstance that led to an inability to pay your bills. And many of people in such situations end up living in their car until they are forced to sell their car. And then once they sell their car, they're forced there to, to live on the streets. And it's a cycle. Once you are on the streets, and again, I am talking about numerous studies that have documented this, that once you lose your ability to pay your mortgage or your rent and make payments on your car, and you end up in the street, your ability to gain employment, to get off the streets, plummets, I mean, because your ability to bathe and change safely, your the extent to which you are harassed by elements on the streets or by the police themselves, and your ability to gain employment and make a good impression and hold employment, and then save enough capital to get off the streets because it's not, you know, you don't start your job today and you can get an apartment. You have to save enough money. So it is just amazingly ignorant to blame the homeless for their plight. The bottom line. And for a Muslim to do it, it's 10 times as worse. Here again is where, you know, someone that sits there in zikr all the time and then some, says something very ignorant like this about the homeless. To me, to what extent have they actually experienced Allah in their heart? Because they can't be bothered by knowing the reasons for the stuff after everything that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. After all the times that the Quran emphasized Ibn Sabil and and Miskin and you know and and after all of this, they can look at people in the street, people in 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 trouble, and not be bothered to actually become educated about why they're in trouble and are comfortable dismissing their suffering by some sweeping generalizations and often often taking their dhikr and their worship as junnah to ig ignore the suffering. Oh, you know, as I'm, I feel so good fasting and praying and so on. I don't want to bother my mazaj, my, my, my mood. I don't want to disturb my mood by thinking of those who are suffering. What type of piety is this? It's not piety. Th that's a drug. You've turned your iman into a drug, into a high. It, the very nature of your, your iman is, is not about you. It's about Allah. And if it's about Allah, then it is, then, this, the person in, 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 in suffering has as much right to well-being as you. And <coughs> Allah, your Iman should teach you that Allah is going to ask you to what extent in there you could have alleviated, removed that suffering, and you failed to do so. And Allah doesn't tell us that Allah is going to ask you, well, you know, why didn't you... Allah is not going to ask you, why didn't you pray a hundred more rakas? Or why didn't you spend, you know, a hundred more hours in the Allah is going to ask you, what could you have done and you failed to do? And if your perception about what your responsibility is doesn't jive with the mizan that Allah has for you and the hereafter, you're in trouble. So, what do you say about someone who is so heedless that they are so comfortable taking Allah for granted 
saying, oh, my response is good enough. And it should, so because what you're saying is the response that is good enough to make me feel good is should be good enough for my God as well. I decided that I've solved the problem by saying it's their fault. And so what you're implying is that because you've decided that it should be good enough for God as well. Well, how much does it trouble you if your response is not God's response? If it doesn't trouble you, then what, what value is your zikr? What value is your iman? See, th that, is, that is the Islam that transformed the world. The Islam of, you know, the, the drug Islam, the Islam that have become a form of injecting yourself with anesthesia against the pains of the world. You know, we we didn't need that Islam. Christianity already played that role, performed that role. And Judaism already performed that role for everyone other than the Israelites. Uh, you know, for Islam to come and do the same, it absolutely makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, thank you for the question about the homeless, because that that is something that... Every time I encounter it, it just really irritates the heck out of me. Because you haven't bothered to do any homework. It is clear you haven't read any articles, you haven't read any books, you haven't watched any documentaries, you haven't done anything. So it is like, oh, like it is the same type of attitude that looks at people in political prison, because you can encounter this among Egyptians and Syrians and Libyans and all, all, all the, the... Well, you, you tell them, you know, how about the people in political prison? Well, what do, have they done to be in prison? Blaming the victim. It's the same attitude. It, it's like, well, you know, I'll, I'll shift the blame to the person suffering so my Islam can continue undisturbed. That's not. A, that's that's not. That, that's 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 truly. If you if you want if you think of what Shaitan would want to corrupt a Surat al-Mustaqim to corrupt the path of Allah, I can't think of a more devious thing for Shaitan to want than that. You know, just use your Islam to. Take care of yourself and the people who are similarly morally oblivious like you and ignore the suffering of all those who are suffering by blaming them. Blaming the person who suffers for their own suffering. You also, you know, you found that, again, when the... The, the more, the, the, the often racist attitude that you get towards, for instance, migrant workers. And then say, oh, well, they're lazy, they're dishonest, they're... As if you had any hand in being, play, in being born an American or a Saudi or a Kuwaiti or, you know, this is what, something Allah gave you to test you, not to bless you, to test you. Being born a Saudi or a Kuwaiti or whatever, it's not a, it's not a blessing, it's a test. Uh, 